Hello, my friends beyond the screen. I'm Taylor, your casual crib keeper, and I have something for you today. The ocean depths. They've always been a source of fascination and mystery, and even with all the modern advancements of technology and science, we still have so, so much we don't know about. I think like 80% of the world's oceans still haven't been explored. So in this video, we're gonna be exploring some of the most intriguing unexplained signals that have been detected down there. From strange and haunting noises to mysterious activity, these signals have baffled scientists and the public at large. So sit back, grab yourself a snack, and join us as we uncover the top five unsettling deep sea signals scientists can't even explain. What do you think is down there in the oceans? You think the Megalodon's hiding out there? I know you guys love the Megalodon. And speaking of, number five, the Megalodon. If you've watched our videos before, then you already know quite well how much time we've spent hunting for the elusive Megalodon, the long since extinct prehistoric king of the waters that, if you believe the legends, is purportedly hiding out deep beneath the ocean waves somewhere out there. Now, despite overwhelming mountains of evidence pointing to the Megalodon being the stuff of history books and disappointing Jason Statham summer blockbusters, this hasn't stopped dedicated research crews looking for the Titanic shark. Every couple years, there's some major breakthrough where someone thinks that they've finally got it only for it to swim away. The Atlantic Shark Institute is a non-profit organization dedicated to the research and conservation of sharks and was conducting a survey in Rhode Island to study shark things. And were using a fish finder to detect activity and were stunned by what they had seen. They thought that they had finally caught the Megalodon when they noticed on a sonar scan an image of a heat pattern that looked like the silhouette of the Meg almost exactly, like almost exactly exactly leading to a bit of excitement, confusion, and let's be honest, probably fear from the research team that they were sailing atop a long extinct shark. Now, as the crew was getting ready to deal with what they had found, they came face to face with the unfortunate truth that they were not sitting atop a prehistoric shark, but rather it was a school of mackerel all swimming in a tight enough formation that it gave off the illusion of the Megalodon. There's some esoteric poetic beauty in that. Even a clump of fish can be mistaken for an impressive shark or something. I don't know, write that into a poem. I personally, I can't imagine how embarrassed I would be if I was a professional shark researcher and I got schooled by a school of fish like that. And if you're looking for more videos on the Megalodon, whew, baby, we've got those. And if you're looking for things that aren't about the ocean, we got some of that too. We got cryptids, we got conspiracies, we got true crime, we got horror movies, we got aliens. Basically, if it's freaky, we've done a video or two on it. So hit that subscribe button, please hit that bell as well, but do me a favor, do that at the end of this video, because I got a couple more scary unexplained signals from under the water for you right now. Number four, the bloop. In 1997, a mysterious and extremely loud bloop sound was detected by underwater microphones, known as hydrophones, located approximately 3,000 miles apart in the Pacific Ocean. And this sound was given the very scientific name of the bloop. You gotta love that. You know how in the Avengers, Thanos' snap was called the blip, and like that seemed kind of silly? I thought that was like a joke, but then it turns out that's more or less how we actually really name mysterious things. Our best and brightest named this the bloop. What a concept. The bloop was one of the loudest sounds ever recorded on the ocean. It was detected by the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration during its search of underwater sounds, such as those emitted by whales or other marine animals. The sound lasted for about a minute and was picked up by several hydrophones over the area, suggesting that whatever was blooping came from a very, very, very large source. Scientists were pretty confused by the bloop, as I think most of us would be, couldn't explain its origin, and were speculating anything from a whale fart, underwater earthquake, the old Great Juan Dagon Ur, all reasonable options. Eventually, further analysis on the bloop reveals its origins, not the star spawn sleeper of Relay, but rather an iceberg calving in the ocean. The bloop was discovered to be an ice quake, which is something I'm learning about precisely right now is a thing that can happen. It's a seismic event caused by a movement of large ice sheets or icebergs. And this sound in particular was unusual for being transmitted through the ocean over a long distance thanks to the acoustic of water. I, I didn't really know water had acoustics, but I kind of want to have an underwater concert now. See if that works. Number three, Julia. 
Our next deeply unsettling signal is the Julia signal. Not the most unsettling name, that's actually a lovely name. But it was a series of strange low frequency sounds detected in 1999 by the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in the Pacific Ocean near the cast near the coast of Chile, intended to reach Julia Roberts, we think, or Julia Louise Dreyfus. The sounds were similar in nature to the bloop, a signal you should know quite a lot about because we did just talk about it. Remember, ice quakes, water acoustics, yada yada yada. Is any of this ringing a bell approximately a minute and 30 seconds ago when I told you all this stuff? This signal was a very low frequency VLF radio signal with a frequency of around 52 hertz. That's how many cycles per second. These signals lasted for about 15 seconds, a series of ascending and descending tones that were over shortly after they began. The signal was named Julia after the researcher who first discovered it, although the origin and purpose of the Julia signal remains completely unknown. So what on this big blue earth was the Julia signal? Well, there have been all sorts of speculations about the source of it. That's pretty much all we can do is speculate what it might have been. Ranging from natural phenomena like underwater earthquakes, ocean currents, or let's get fun, particularly wild possibilities like secret military communications, extraterrestrial activity, undersea aliens, it's more likely than you think. It's no wilder than above sea aliens. Now there are some too who believe that it could be as simple an explanation as a mistake, an error in a reading somewhere, some technology going haywire, which I think would be pretty embarrassing personally. Well, your guess is genuinely as good as mine and probably even as good as the researchers guesses since no one has figured out what the Julia signal was all about to date. Number two, up sweep. Coming up next on our list of strange signals we can't quite figure out is going to be the up sweep signal. I like, by the way, that they've all got fun little code names. You know, they're not just called the weird signal of 1991. No, they got backstories. They got personality. They got a little chutzpah. The up sweep signal is a mysterious sound that was first recorded by the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory. That's the N-O-A-A-P-M-E-L-R-E-S-P-E-C-T in August 1991. The sound is a series of narrowband up sweeping sounds, hence the name, that sounds like a siren with a dominant frequency around 1 hertz and the most intense between the frequencies of 0.5 and 2.5 hertz. The sound was heard continuously until 1994 and has been recorded every year since then, but at a lower intensity. I guess the neighbors told them to turn the volume down just a little bit. Despite years of study, the source of the upsweep signal still remains unknown to this day. There are theories, of course, but nothing that we can conclusively prove or point to as one being correct. One possibility, volcanic activity, undersea tectonic movements. Some researchers have speculated that the sound may be caused by the movement of magma deep beneath the sea floor, which could be producing a vibrating or resonating effect in the water column. Another fun theory is that the sound is related to the movement of large groups of marine animals, such as fish or whales or megalodons. It's possible that the upsweep signal is a result of the vocalizations or movements of a big old group of animals, although they haven't found one animal in particular that they can point to as the source of the sound. I think if we're learning anything today as a class, as a group, it's just how many mysterious unexplained signals the NOAA deals with. I'm starting to wonder if there's any explained signals the NOAA has found. Also, have you enjoyed how this list is basically the same point four or five times? I did, I'm having a lot of fun with this one, to be honest. Number five, whistle. Our last mysterious deep sea signal that we're going to try and uncover is the whistle. It's an enigmatic sound that was detected in 2016 in the Mariana Trench. Not by the Marianas Trench, the Canadian indie rock band. I do get them mixed up too. Coming from the deepest part of the world's oceans, this strange sound was picked up by a hydrophone array by everybody's favorite aquatic branch of the government, the NOAA. It was described as a long, high-pitched whistle that lasted for several minutes. Now, the whistle stands out amongst its brothers and sisters with strange sounds for its weirdly long duration and the fact that it was picked up at multiple locations around the ocean. This tells us possibly that the sound was produced by a large and powerful source that was capable of transmitting its signal over great distances. The signal was detected by sensors that were part of the Ocean Observatory's initiative that had been installed in the deep sea in order to monitor seismic activity, volcanic eruptions, and other natural phenomena. Despite being detected a while ago, much like every other weird signal on this list, we don't really know what's going on with it, like at all. 
scientists, you know, same explanations I've listed in all the other points, seismic activity, tectonic plates, result of underwater volcanic activity, or of course, old gods waking from their formless slumber, ready to cast the world into an eternal deep and dreamless sleep. It very well could be any one of those things. Could also just be nothing. Well, that's about all she wrote for this one, my ghouls and goblins. Thanks so much for watching. Creep on, creep it on, and I'll see you in the next one after my meeting with the NOAA. We got a lot to talk about, a lot of weird signals to talk about.